Today is the 20th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall and everybody all over the world, maybe with the exception of some countries, like China maybe, um, is celebrating and the National Security Archive uh, has just prepared this volume of documents where we have uh, previously classified documents from Soviet, American, and East European archives. It's about 120 documents altogether that tell the story of the end of the Cold War in Europe. And we've been working on this project for slightly over 10 years collecting these documents. And one of the interesting stories that the documents tell is how the Soviet leadership um, not just accepted but encouraged um, reform in Eastern Europe. And one of the issues you see mentioned very often is whether there was a threat of use of force in Eastern Europe in 1989 or even earlier. And what our documents show that at n is that at no time uh, during 1989 or 1990 was there any discussion in the Soviet Politburo, in the leadership, even among the military, about using force. Not even arch-conservatives ever offered this as a possible option on Eastern Europe. And the main reason that this was never considered was the position of the General Secretary, Gorbachev, who very early on, beginning in 1986, said that these methods, methods of 1956 and 68, will not work any longer. They are unacceptable. His personal aversion to violence, his principled position even when the events began moving uncontrollably in Eastern Europe. So that is one of the major findings from our documents and um, I think it's worth mentioning today when we all celebrate the anniversary not just of the Berlin Wall falling but also of the events in Eastern Europe, the peaceful revolutions. There was a very strong position of the Soviet leadership to keep those revolutions peaceful and uh, they stood by that principle even when the situation became tough. And the second interesting finding um, from these documents relevant to today is that the fall of the wall was actually a long process which started arguably in March 1989 when the Hungarians decided to take down their border defenses and they uh, talked with Gorbachev, a Hungarian delegation of the reformed communist leadership went to Moscow and informed Gorbachev about that decision and he did not have any problem with that. In fact, he said, yes, and the Soviet Union is also going to open its borders, make our borders more open, he said. And then from that time on, the process truly was unstoppable. Uh, the first crossings were in the summer, in August uh, 1989. Then in September, Hungary completely opened its borders. And of course, German refugees went through the Hungarian-Austrian border and also went to uh, Prague, to uh, the West German embassy. And from there, they had to get on the train and go cross back into GDR and then into FRG. When the wall finally fell, we all know now that it was just by mistake and uh, that the Western media played a large part in publicizing the opening, which was not yet an opening, but then people took their fate in their own hands and thousands and thousands of refugees crossed to the West and made this revolution possible. And the West stood by watching in puzzlement, in anxiety, and the Soviets also stood by allowing that to happen, also with anxiety, but not trying to interfere and stop it.